two chains, one farmer, wax tech shines during NFT day, effect AI joins forces with Ivan on tech, a canopy, and much more. Hello EOS Nation, I'm Daniel Keyes and this is episode 71 of the EOS Hot Sauce. As always, our spicy weekly updates are available in every format. Watch on YouTube, listen on SoundCloud or your favorite podcast player, or read it at eosnation.io. That's also where you can subscribe to the EOS Nation newsletter to get that spicy sauce poured straight into your inbox. However you prefer it, help spread the sauce by smashing that like, ringing that bell, and giving us a 5 star rating. Let's kick this week's spicy goodness off with a short DeFi story about two chains and one farmer. Good morning fellow farmers, how are we doing today? I see our crops grew strong overnight. Shall we harvest them? Heading over to my Ethereum produce farm, I see that my fruits and vegetables grew and multiplied overnight, which is great. But the fees can reach to over $40 to process the transactions required to harvest my crops. I'd like to de-risk and sell my produce, but that means I'll need to pay huge gas fees to harvest my produce, pay huge gas fees to trade my produce, and possibly pay huge gas fees for a failed transaction that accomplishes nothing, and pay those fees once more when I try again. I decided to hold on to my produce for now. When more produce has accumulated, I'll sell it all at once to reduce the impact of those pesky fees on my farming bottom line. I just hope the produce market doesn't crash before I decide to sell them. Disappointed in not being able to harvest my produce, I walk on over to my EOS factory to see how many of my products have been created. This factory is much more high tech than my produce farm as it was built more recently and with better technology. The efficient use of electricity and technology means I can package my products very cheaply and I don't have to worry about fees when I create, collect, or sell my products. The only thing I need to worry about when managing my EOS factory investments is how I allocate my assets. Do I want more or less exposure to a particular asset? Do I want to add or remove liquidity from pools? Do I want to claim my dividends every hour or every day? At the EOS factory, you can make these important financial decisions without being encumbered by the annoying gas fees. What a joy. But you need to be careful out there. It's impossible to earn return without taking on some risks. At least in the EOS factory, you don't have to pay crazy fees to manage risks like you want it. The highly efficient EOS network also allows users to explore these exciting platforms without having to risk large sums of money. Even with just a few dollars worth of assets, users can still try out various DeFi products in EOS and learn about this brave new world. Moving on now from DeFi to the equally spicy world of NFTs. As any regular viewer of the EOS hot sauce would know, NFTs have been surging in popularity on both Wax and EOS networks. Last week, Coin Genius and the guys from Bad Crypto got together to organize an NFT-themed crypto conference with many of the top NFT blockchain teams from across the entire space. We heard from a variety of teams that have products deployed across a variety of networks. For those of us who are heads down and focused on only EOS IO networks, this event gave us a good opportunity to take a look at the entire space. A common theme that popped up a lot was, wait for it, gas fees. Obviously the DeFi bull run on Ethereum has made the network usage fees skyrocket to insane levels. How are you supposed to trade NFTs if the transaction to simply put it on the marketplace costs 10 to $40? It's no surprise that sales volumes on Ethereum based NFT platforms such as OpenSea have seen significant downturns. It was great to see Joel Calm and Travis, the guys behind Bad Crypto Podcast and the Blockchain Heroes NFT series, gushing at how amazing Wax is for creating and trading NFTs. Travis expressed a lot of delight at the fact that he can send a pack to a lucky community member on livestream and see the pack arrive instantly, allowing the viewer to open his pack right away. It's crystal clear that Wax and USIO offer an absolutely amazing user experience when it comes to creating, collecting, and trading NFTs. There were many panels and keynote speeches, and we'll go over some of our favorite segments right now. There was the panel on unlocking alternative revenue streams for artists, musicians, and athletes with blockchain artist Vesa Kivinen, Evan Vanderberg from Wax, and Tobin Lent from Tops. Some of the more eye-popping things that we learned in this panel is that Tops has earned six times more on secondary markets than during their primary sales. These breathtaking numbers have attracted a lot of attention from other Tops brands, many of which are exploring options for how to release NFT series for their fans. We also had a surprise mini collection revealed and released during the NFT day. The GPK Crash Gordon series sold out nearly instantly and contains five different cards, A and B, with three levels of rarity. Later on during the panel, we heard Vesa explain the enormous problem that's currently plaguing the old world art scene. Fakes are rampant and Vesa claimed that up to 50% of the artwork listed in the very reputable Christie's auction catalog may be frauds. He makes a convincing argument that the ability to recognize if an NFT art piece is real or fake, at no cost of either time or money, 
is an absolute game changer for the art world. And that's not even getting into the fact that NFTs allow artists from around the world to mint and distribute their artwork for very little costs. He anticipates seeing tremendous growth in the next 5-10 to 10 years in the NFT space, and we fully agree with him. He also mentioned that the digital version of a collectible Nike sneaker has sold for more than the real version of the sneaker. Basically, what, one of the things maybe that contributes to the conversation from before is this whole exciting thing that I call the, the flippening. In, in this case, the, the sense that I, I think this prediction will uh, hold very well is that <clears throat> we still have physical art pieces that sell for hundreds of millions and, and more. Uh, and basically, we will probably in our lifetime see a digital art piece go for more than the physical counterparts do uh, go in the legacy art world. And this is because of the traceability of these digital art pieces and why they're so exciting is that a little less known uh, sort of industry, almost open secret is that even the Christie's and Sotheby's catalogs who have the biggest muscle to make sure that the, the physical art pieces that you're buying are authentic. And like, for example, the guy who authenticates Jack, uh, Jackson Pollock's refuses to authenticate anymore because there's simply too many fakes and there's sort of these art art render farms in China. And it's a, it's a big mess and you, you can have up to 50% that are fakes in a Christie's catalog. So that gives you a little bit of a, of a sense of how important it is to know the source of the collectible that you're buying. And, and this time when you go into crypto, you, you get 100% sure that it's authentic, especially if the artist. Another great clip saw Travis asking Tobin, what has to happen for Star Wars or Marvel to release on blockchain? Tobin gave a great answer and shared that most brands are currently approaching NFTs with intense curiosity and slight trepidation. Brands are certainly interested in the potential, but are afraid about how they can maintain control of their intellectual property once released on the blockchain. Those concerns are likely to diminish over time as we see bigger and bigger brands release their IP on various blockchains. We also learned that Topps GPK Series 2 launch is targeted for the end of September. Get your WAX tokens ready. The first keynote address was by WAX CEO William Quigley, who put the emphasis on what he thinks is an unsung part of NFTs which is the fact that nothing else in the universe outside of crypto tokens gives you the ability to prove authenticity instantly and at no cost. Therefore, you can't fake the total supply, which is a trick used by collectible card publishers in the 80s and 90s. How do we know that the manufacturer really only produced X number of cards? Back then, we had to trust the seller. Today, we can verify the supply ourselves directly on the blockchain. How wonderful. Then there was the panel titled The Rising Industry of Gaming Collectibles in Esports. Are NFTs the emerging core component of the billion dollar industry? This one featured Dirk Luth, co-founder of Upline.me, Marguerite de Corcel, CEO of Blockade Games, and Alexander Leonard Larson, CEO of Axie Infinity. Some of our favorite moments from this panel included when Marguerite described how NFTs could be used by gamers as a tamper-proof record of their gaming career, allowing them to build their own portfolio of gaming achievements, all recorded immutably on chain. Well, I love the idea that you can have this you can have valuable assets that can exist on these different mediums without being held by a third party. Um, that was the one, it was, it was basically like magic. For example, making crypto puzzles for me was taking a private key and encoding it into artwork initially. And now that idea has scaled where the journey of, for example, treasure hunting, even if it's in a video game or scaling a character, you can now capture the value of the experience and the history and ledger of the assets you're interacting with and you yourself as a gamer and your identity can also have like this on-chain uh, history of the things you have done. So I guess for me, it's like as a gamer, now we have, it's, it could be a real career path in a different way. Like money games, we're seeing money games explode all over the space in different creative ways. If it's DeFi, and Alexander brought up a fascinating concept revolving around granting actual ownership of the game for players who grind up to high levels. In the DeFi space, yield farmers contribute liquidity to various pools in order to earn ownership of the protocol through their governance token. Can we apply the same concept to gaming? In addition to in-game gold and experience, players could also earn ownership shares of their favorite game, creating player owners. But our favorite quote from Alexander came when he was talking about the psychological impacts of making the decision to hold the game item instead of selling it for real Satoshis. He said, The opportunity to be able to sell the item is incredibly powerful, and this builds a really solid connection to the game asset. Speaking of NFTs, it's time to race for rares. If you're joining us for the YouTube premiere of this episode, type Spicy Rare in the live chat now for a chance to win one of five Spicy Rare NFTs.
and guess the length of this episode to win one of two NFT packs. You've got two minutes starting now. And if you'd like a chance to win this week's Golden Chili, leave a relevant comment on this video about one of today's spicy topics. You don't need to be here for the premiere for this one. You've got two days to leave a comment. Good luck, and don't forget you need to sign up to be eligible at eosnation.io spicy. And make sure to smash the like if you're hyped for some NFTs. Up next, the partnerships keep on rolling in for Ultra. This week we learned that Ultra joined forces with the Theta Network to integrate live streaming technology as part of its core offerings. The team also secured a new listing, this time on Bitmax platform. To highlight the listing, Bitmax hosted the Ultra team for a Telegram AMA session. You can find the full transcript on Medium, which includes answers to questions asked by Bitmax as well as the community. Our Chinese audience will be happy to hear that Ultra also published a video interview with co-CEOs David Hansen and Nicholas Gillot with Chinese subtitles. More good news coming now from WordProof. The founder of Yoast, Juice de Velk, and Yoast CEO, Marek van der Recht, announced that they've taken a stake in WordProof. With well over 10 million users, Yoast is one of the most popular WordPress plugins for SEO optimization, and we're excited to see how time-stamping content will soon become a factor for SEO rankings. To us, it's a perfect match, and we're convinced that the combination of both services will improve the visibility of quality web content drastically. Just Develk said, from a publishing perspective, the ability to prove authorship, to unequivocally prove that you were the first with a specific piece of content, is game-changing. With WordProof, unprecedented integrity can be brought to the world of content publishing and e-commerce in an open-source manner, which creates awesome opportunities for social sharing sites and search engines. To dig a little deeper, and to understand the massive potential, we recommend the Timestamps for SEO tutorial, which is part of the WordProof Academy. After being awarded one of Block One's EOS VC grants, receiving support from the Nord Holland Innovation Fund, and winning the Blockchain for Social Good competition by the European Union, this is yet another great success for WordProof. We're happy to have such a great team in our community building kick-ass tools on EOSIO. Are you a Yup user yet, or is your social media experience still a bit overwhelming? Yup is a great tool to sort quality content on different social media platforms, and is built on the EOS mainnet and the DAP network. Plus, it pays you for your ratings. Check out the brand new explainer video linked in the written edition of this episode to learn more. Next up, Effect AI partners with Ivan on Tech Academy. Chris Daw, CEO of Effect AI, made an appearance on Ivan on Tech's popular Good Morning Crypto show to introduce Effect AI to Ivan's large audience and to share the good news. And boy, was it spicy. We're happy to report that the Ivan on Tech Academy will join forces with the Effect AI in Blockchain Centers, an initiative to establish training centers across the globe in partnership with the United Nations. Besides learning how to generate income as an Effect Force worker, members of the Effect AI in Blockchain Centers can now also join educational programs from the Ivan on Tech Academy, covering topics such as blockchain, cryptography, programming, business development, and more. The Ivan on Tech Academy is already a very successful online offering. And with Effect AI, they now have a perfect partner to bring their curriculum to physical locations. Creating new opportunities and empowering people has always been a core motivation in the blockchain community. This partnership is a great example that financial inclusion goes hand in hand with educational inclusion. Congratulations to all parties involved. That's not all Chris had to share though. He was excited to share that the EFX token is going to be listed on KuCoin. With so much good news, Effect AI got a lot of attention and their Telegram group was flooded with new members. Ivan on Tech also had yet another interesting EOS guest on his show recently. Dan Larimer, founder and CTO of Block One, joined Ivan for a great interview about EOS, EOSIO, and what he's currently working on. Definitely check that out if you haven't. It's great to see Dan making more public appearances and sharing his excitement for what's to come from Block One. Thanks to Ivan for sharing some great EOS news with his audience and for his EOS programming courses. And we've got some great news from the Callisto Network team, as they're now offering an Ethereum to EOS smart contract migration service. Dexaran, the co-founder of the Callisto Network and an expert for smart contracts and security, has gained lots of expertise and knowledge in both EOS and Ethereum over the years. Many might know him through his extensive stress testing of the EOS mainnet. Being aware of the hardships that dApps on Ethereum are currently facing, he and his team created a migration service so that dApp owners can move their smart contracts easily over to EOS and enjoy the benefits of a more efficient blockchain protocol. Any interested party can request a migration with just a few clicks. The Callisto network experts will rewrite any Solidity smart contract in C++ compatible with EOS, 
while preserving all the original functionalities and providing guidance and technical support after the EOS contract is deployed. For many DAP owners, this might be a quick and easy fix so that they continue focusing on building their user base and business instead of being stuck hoping for lower gas fees, or eventually Ethereum 2.0. You'll find a great introduction to EOS in comparison to Ethereum in the announcement article, and we found a more specific comparison with regards to DeFi in an accompanying piece on EOS Go. For example, did you know that sending EOS tokens to a non-existent address is impossible on EOS due to a built-in communication model? Definitely a nice feature to have when you want to build a DeFi application with mass adoption potential. Mythical Games Director of Community Justin Kruger and Senior Level Designer Josh Foreman gave a great presentation of Blancos at Gamescom 2020. Besides explaining the general concept of Blancos, they shared some interesting details about how levels, aka block parties, can be built, edited, and shared, allowing all sorts of combinations like battle royale shooters, vibe collectors, and races, along with a growing repertoire of game elements like the funky rainbow gun. Gotta love those cute Blancos, we want them all. Make sure to reserve your account for a chance to enter a beta later this year at Blancos.com. Time is flying and the voice community keeps growing. The crypto writer joined voice just a month ago, and now they've presented a selection of articles and stats. Crypto writer has so far accounted for 140 posts, 1,563 likes, 824 comments, and over a million winning voice. Good job, crypto writer. We love the action. Speaking of action, mBlue Crypto was literally rocking our world with his awesome My Bitcoin Bull Anthem which was published as the first music video NFT and auctioned off on Uplift.art. We saw lots of live streams and interviews to push this event, which successfully raised a total of 204,474 wax. And that was just the first of more to come. You can learn more about this in his latest Uplift.art summary and Path Forward video. What an impressive output. After the auction, it was time for some chill, and mBlue Crypto chose to do that in the form of a nice relaxed fireside chat with EOS Nation CEO Eve LaRose. Tune in for a great conversation on EOS, NFTs, philanthropy, life, and culture. And that's all for this week's episode of EOS Hot Sauce. We've got more spicy goodness for you every week, so subscribe, hit the bell, and stay tuned for the next one. And if you can't wait till next week, find our previous episodes at eosnation.io or on our YouTube channel. Once again, I'm your host, Daniel Keyes, and we'll see you again next week. Until then, let's keep it spicy.